I am back from my trip and back to my favorite topic, gender war, how men and women hate each other's guts, despise each other, and are at each other's throats. A process that had begun 150 years ago and had reached its climax actually a hundred years ago. We are on the crest of a wave that is beginning to be two centuries old. But men are hitting back now. Men are not taking this lying down. They're fighting back. Women emancipated themselves from the onerous yoke of domesticity. Men treated women as domestic slaves. They regarded women as playthings, dolls. That was the best case. They killed women for a variety of transgressions. They subjugated women. They humiliated women. Women then fought back. And now men are taking the initiative with a counter-attack. This begins to resemble the war in Ukraine, only on a much, much bigger scale. What men are saying now are, women, you are too independent. I'm terrified, says the, men, the typical men. I'm terrified that you will no longer tolerate my abuse and my infantilism. I'm afraid that you will decline to serve me as you have hitherto over millennia, at least since the agricultural revolution. I know that on the first opportunity you will abandon me and I will lose you. That's what a typical man thinks nowadays. Typical men do not trust women. They don't regard them as loyal. They never did, actually. Men today say to women, you are too well educated. I feel inferior compared to you. I feel inadequate. I feel that I'm being outcompeted in many workplaces. Men say to women, you sleep around with strangers and friends alike. It makes me feel like a statistic, a number, a mere conquest, objectified not special, insecure, and unsafe. In short, what men are telling women is, you are too much like the men of yore. You had become men. Men are telling women, you had become men, and we don't like it. It's as if the male population had doubled within 150 years, and the competition had skyrocketed competition for power, competition for education, competition for, for positions, competition for social ranking, competition for sex. Everything now, men find themselves outnumbered, outgunned, outeducated, driven down the social ladder. The future is female. Matriarchy is on the horizon displacing rapidly and abruptly patriarchy. Men don't like it. Ask any man. Never mind the age, never mind the level of education, never mind the socioeconomic status. Ask any man anywhere in the world and they will tell you women went too far. Men have this sense. Now, Western men are educated to lie, to prevaricate, to pretend and to fake. Western men are taught and indoctrinated to be politically correct. And so they don't dare to say what men in the East and the South openly proclaim and promulgate. Women have gone too far. Too far, not in terms of rights. There are very few men nowadays who would contest women's rights. Very few, men, very few men would say men should have more rights than women. Women have gone too far, not in terms of equal pay, for example. 
of equal wages. Actually, they still have, still have a long way to go. The US Soccer Federation has just have just equalized the pay of men, losing men and winning women on the teams. And that took 30 years. There was a battle of 30 years to accomplish this utterly no this utter no brainer. You know, women should earn as much as men for equal equal jobs. So no one is or very few people are disputing, men or women or women are disputing that men should have equal rights or equal pay. But women have gone too far. Men are right all over the world, regardless of level of education and erudition and exposure to gender studies, men have a point. Women have gone too far. And women, women have gone too far in terms, of, in terms of militancy. They have become militant. Women began, began especially in the 1980s and 1990s, began to regard the relationship between the genders as a zero-sum game. If women win, men lose. If men win, of course, women stand to lose. Men are the enemy, the adversary, the competitor, never the collaborator. So this increasing wave of militancy um, leveraging issues such as sexual abuse and rape, um, unequal pay in the workplace, tackling, properly tackling um, discrepancies in the power structure, intersectionality, um, the causes were just and right and proper, but the aggressiveness and the militancy were not. Women started to be reactant, defiant, in your face. This is psychopathic behavior. Women have adopted psychopathic men as their role models. It's as if women had been enslaved and then they had been emancipated and then they said, well, I'm going to behave exactly it's like the cruel master of the plantation. I'm going to be as, as violent, as militant, as fundamentalist, as cruel, as disruptive as the least of men. The most bullying, narcissistic, grandiose, in your face, defined, reckless psychopath. I'm going to be like that. These, were, these are the role models of women since the 1990s, the third and fourth wave of feminism. So in terms of aggression, sublimated aggression, passive aggression, and outright aggression, women have gone way too far. There was also a usurpation of masculine traits, behaviors, norms, and roles. This is called the stalled revolution. I'll discuss it in, in a few minutes. Women had come to identify themselves more and more in masculine terms. This is very evident in studies over the last 40 years. Women are becoming, had become men, actually, to, for all intents and purposes. And so, by doing so, women had invaded the psychosocial turf, the territory of men, not in order to obtain equity and equality, but in order to challenge and supplant and replace and substitute for men. It was an outright declaration of hostilities, not to say war. It was casus belli. And so men, this mobilized men, this created a backlash, which is now manifesting. The usurpation of masculinity led to the evolution of another version of masculinity, toxic masculinity. Ironically, toxic masculinity characterizes both men and women today. And then there was the raunch culture, gratuitous, empowering promiscuity, indiscriminate sex everywhere, everywhere and with everyone individually and in groups, as a form of slut pride, a form of self-empowerment. 
a form of no shame and no guilt, positive sex, sex positivity. The raunch culture, as Ariel Levy and others, a feminist by the way, had observed, actually helped men to objectify women even further. Women had internalized the objectifying gaze of men and had become sex dolls. Women had transitioned from being sexual to being sexy. The mass media, the advertising industry, the fashion industry were all modeled in order to encourage, foster, buttress and engender and catalyze the raunch culture. But the raunch culture made men feel very unsafe and insecure because when men when men started to consider relationships, committed long-term relationships, they became very worried about the internalization of raunch culture by potential intimate partners. No one wants to marry a promiscuous woman. No one wants to be in a cohabitation or a committed relationship with a woman whose ideal of sex is to be used, abused and trashed by men. Um, so, men felt unsafe. They also felt that they are losing their uniqueness and specialty because, as I said before, they became just a number in a game. Women started to compete in terms of body counts, number of acts, nationalities of various sexual partners, one night stands, Became, became badges of honor. Men felt that these kind of women are not relationship material and men were right. Studies show clearly that promiscuous women tend to divorce three to five times more, in some cases ten times more, tend to cheat three times more and tend to not feel commitment in relationships, to be disgruntled, to be unhappy in committed relationships. So men were right. But promiscuity had become the standard behavior of women. If you are not promiscuous, you are prudish. Something is wrong with you. Go see a therapist. And so this depleted the available, the, the pool of available intimate partners. And men felt that they are competing for an ever shrinking ever-shrinking number of boundaried, self-respecting women. On the other hand, many men reveled in the, in the newfangled promiscuity of women. And I will discuss it a bit later. They, men lost the incentive to commit and to invest in a relationship. Those men who are interested mostly in sex had no longer an incentive to formalize and structure um, their sexuality. Men now are hitting back at all these developments. Domestic violence laws have been repealed in Russia. It is now legal for a husband to beat his wife for the first time in decades. Women in Afghanistan are confined to home under a male guardian. They are no longer allowed to attend school. They have to cover their faces on television. This is a reversal of 20 or 30 years of Afghan history. In the United States, abortion rights are being repealed all over in numerous states and the Supreme Court is about, about to repeal Roe v. Wade, the 1970s decision which had granted abortion rights to all women. Women are about to lose their right to their own bodies in the United States. That's a backlash. That's a backlash. All these developments all over the world are indications that men are organizing and creating ideologies, conservative ideologies, that seek to unroll to roll back uh, women's accomplishments, women's rights, 
and all the achievements of the four feminist waves in the past 150 years, I will not be shocked to see additional developments driving women back to the 1950s. I will not be shocked at all, all over the world. And then there is the aforementioned toxic masculinity. In men, the expression is organizations within a toxic ambience, a toxic environment called the manosphere. Men are organizing themselves. MGTOW, men going their own way. Incels, involuntary celibates. Dating coaches. In all these spaces, men are organizing themselves to reject women. These are misogynistic spaces. The hatred is palpable. The distrust, the contempt. And this rejection is an organized form of rejection with an ideological clout. It's not just a series of coordinated individual acts. It's a philosophy of life. It's the belief that women cannot and should not be trusted, that they are predatory, that they are out there to get men and their property, that they should be avoided at all costs, that marriage is not about subjugating women, it's about subjugating men, and that the institutions of the state and the law are on women's side, disproportionately, unfairly, and unjustly. Women are manipulating the law and the organs of the state and various social institutions because they hold privileged positions, for example, in teaching, in the courtrooms. Women are a majority of judges and, um, and, and so on, and women are majority of teachers. And so women's, women are leveraging their newfound political and social power to disenfranchise men, perhaps vengefully to punish them for millennia of mistreatment. There is a war there. Women are angry at men. They don't trust men. They disdain men. They think men are immature, unwilling to invest and to commit. Liars, deceivers, players. Women feel that they're being played. So women are avoiding men or treating men as men used to treat women, as objects of sexual gratification or kind of glorified pets or playthings. Women talk about men the, the way men used to talk about women in the 19th century. Henrik Ibsen came up with a series of theater plays describing this, the predicament of women at the time and the way men regarded them. Women today regard men exactly the same way. There has been an inversion of the power matrix and women are not making good use of this newfound power. Rather than elevating men to their level, increasing in men empathy, compassion, affection, and so on. What women are doing, they are using this power to punish men, to penalize them, and to take over. It's a hostile takeover. It's not a merger. It's not an acquisition. It's a hostile takeover. So red pillars, incels, MGTOWs, and so on, these, these groups of men, ever-expanding groups of men, presumably they are few million of them already, all over the world, by the way, they, they radicalize, they escalate, they sound like fundamentalists, and, and their hatred of women is palpable. It's not going to end well. And women are now beginning to go their own way. Women are beginning to reciprocate by coming up, coming up with mirrors of male toxic masculinity. The stalled revolution it's a, it's a term used in sociology and psychology. The stalled revolution, stalled, S-T-A-L-L-E-D. The stalled revolution means that when it comes to sexual mores, marriage, relationships, and family, men remain stuck in a Victorian England mindset, while women have progressed into a feminist 21st century. Women are still Victor uh, men are still Victorian. They still accept purity, if not virginity, from their women. They still demand loyalty. And they still, never mind how they protest 
in public, but privately, they still think it's the woman's chore to deal with children in the home. Men are Victorian. Women are nowhere to be seen. They're out of sight because they've moved into the 21st century. They are 150 years ahead of men. Men have a lot of catching up to do. But not only are they not catching up, as I've described earlier, men are regressing. Men are trying to unroll, roll back women's accomplishments and subject them, subject women to the new patriarchy. The new patriarchy has a liberal progressive face. These are men who would tell you that they believe in equity and equality for women. They are the biggest feminists. But in the, under the guise, behind the scenes, these men are terrified. And they seek to resubmit. They want women to resubmit. And confronted with this abyss, women face a stark choice. Either they give up on men altogether and go it alone while assuming masculine traits and roles and engaging in casual sex, or they can regress and they can subject themselves to male dominance and objectification. Ronch culture is actually exactly such a regression. Proud, proud sluts, <laughs> they mold themselves, they render themselves, they make themselves the object of the male gaze. Men dictate, men tell women how to be sluts. Men inform women what clothes to wear and how to behave. And these women conform. W women who are proud sluts, women in the ranch culture, they're not empowered, they're slavish. They cater to the stereotypes and fantasies, the most rabid fantasies of men. And so these women have regressed and they have accepted male objectification and dominance in the ranch culture and in supposedly intimate relationships. These are the two choices. Either you live alone and you have casual sex to satisfy your needs or you give up you give in and you surrender and you become yet again exactly like in victorian england a men's object there is no other alternative there are numerous attempts to cohabit to have committed relationships to get married they don't work these venues don't work Divorce rates are about 40 to 50% in first marriages, 70% in second marriages, 90% in third marriages. Fewer people cohabit today or are in intimate relationships or in committed relationships than ever before. Substantially fewer. 31% of, of, of people are lifelong singles. About 50% of the total adult population are ac actually singles. They're in pseudo relationships or long distance relationships, all kinds of bullshit, <laughs> pseudo, uh, bullshit substitutes for a real committed, intimate, invested relationship. There's no such thing anymore. This option, relationships, is dead. Marriage rates have fallen 50%, that's 50% since 1990. Dating is down 65%. Even sex is down 25%. The, the genders are disengaging. There's atomization. Men and women start to live all alone with their Netflix and cats or dogs, depending on your sex. So women, if women don't capitulate and revert to the traditional female roles, the traditional gender roles and norms, to the erstwhile old sexual scripts and social scripts, if they don't go back there, if they don't regress 150 years, 
they're going to lose men. They're going to remain menless. Now, many women would tell you, that's not such a big loss, actually. <laughs> and you can always pick up a man and have sex with him. They're always, you know, they're always available to have sex. So if the issue is sex, a woman can have sex every single day with another man. That's hardly the issue. Intimacy, companionship, love, romance, long-term planning, children, family, they're dead in the water. Women don't, men don't have anything more to offer. Women are independent financially. Women can make children all by their own without a man. And women can have sex to their heart's content. Just swipe in the right direction. So men have become redundant and obsolete. They're fighting back the only way they know how. Through the institutions of the state trying to coerce women back into a role that is long dead. As things stand now, most men are merely taking advantage of women's newfangled sex positivity. They have casual sex with women and then they walk away from casual sex, from a one-night stand, largely unscathed. Women are paying the price of this male sexual opportunism in terms of heartbreak, bed sex, childless, childlessness, loneliness, and career or financial damage. And it's a war. It's a war. And the only weapons that men have are relationships and sex. So they become abusive in relationships and they withhold sex or impose sex on women. These are the only two weapons in men, in the arsenal of the male, of the typical modern male. And they are making profligate use of these weapons. It is a war. It's a war that men seem to be losing everywhere except the bedroom, except the living room. When it comes to intimacy, relationships and sex, men are inflicting heavy damages on women. Men are punishing women severely. Women have careers, women have professions, women have power, women have education, women have money. Women don't have love, women don't have relationships, women don't have intimacy, women are lonely, women get only bad sex, bad exploitative sex. This is women's punishment for being uppity and for going too far. And in this sense, men are winning big time even as they make strides in the real world when it comes to intimate relationships women are more abused and disempowered than ever before men just joyfully roam around humping dozens of throw away disposable women in the promiscuous disneyland of postmodernity This inversion of gender roles and the gender wars are only one element in a world that's gone awry, in a reality that's become surreal. It's a crazy, crazy, mad world out there. The world is topsy-turvy, upside down. This is not a transition period. It is a period of utter disintegration and upheaval. Everything is falling apart. It's not a question of rebuilding. There's no will to rebuild because there's no will to engage anymore. There's no will to engage in the workplace. There's no will to engage men and women. There's no will to engage to create families or anything for that matter. People are tired. People of all ages are exhausted. And they're exhausted by other people. So they want to avoid people. Social media is a way of being asocial legitimately. Take, for example, a recent piece of news. Ed Sheeran and Taylor Swift are the most recent recipients of honorary doctorates from prestigious universities. These two intellectual giants were preceded by lightweights like Sigmund Freud, Albert Einstein, Winston Churchill, and Nelson Mandela. 
need I say more about the state of the world today?